Peter Parfit and welcome to part two of my demonstration and review of the Festool PSC 420 Carvex Jigsaw. Just to remind you, I've got the battery operated version and I have the 15 volt lithium ion battery on this machine. In part one, you'll see me introduce the machine, show you how to set it up and show you some basic cuts. In part two, I'm going to show you how to make some finer cuts and I'll be showing you how to use the splinter guard. So let's get cracking. Now the first thing I want to do is to show you how to install a splinter guard, one of the clear plastic inserts that goes within the base here and it helps stop the splintering when you're doing fine cuts. Now you'll see on the splinter guard there's a little uh, indent towards the back here well, that's going to go on the left-hand side as you look from the top. It's just a question of always doing it the same way so that if you do replace the splinter guard, um, that uh, you put it back in the same way that it came out. So there's a little slide mechanism there, and you slide it in until it is just touching the blade. Don't try and force it any further. And then we're going to turn the machine on, and then we're going to push it the rest of the way by pushing against the surface. And I'm going to use the edge of my MFT3, but I'm going to take great care not to allow the saw blade to hit any part of the MFT3 itself. So I'll turn the machine on. And, and that's it in position. I had to sort of push it quite hard. Now, removing these can be pretty tricky, uh, and I'll show you how to remove one straight away. I prefer to take the base off and take it to my vise and then put the splinter guard in the corner of the vise and give it a pull. And that's it done. Now, I prefer to do that because my hands are pretty arthritic, uh, but you may be strong enough to be able to do it uh, your own way. Right, I have here a piece of MDF which is veneered on both sides with oak. And I've actually varnished this side and I'm trying to replicate uh, the sort of situation where you've got some uh, built-in units which you've got to install and you've got to do a scribe line and this stuff is very expensive and you've just got one chance to do a cut and it's got to be your best cut ever. And I've got a scribe line there, which I hope you can probably see. Now I've got my splinter guard in. I've got the pendulum set at three. I've got my speed control on automatic, so that it will speed up as I go along. And you'll see my uh, light come on uh, when I set the machine going shortly. I'll just turn the extractor on. That is the scribed line, and there's not a single splinter anywhere along there whatsoever. And this is the face side, the top side, and the underneath side also oak veneered, and it's absolutely perfect. And for those that need to see whether something's square or not, uh, I hope the camera can pick that up, that is absolutely perfect in every detail. Right, what I've got here is a piece of mahogany veneered block board. Now this is the worst wood I've ever had to cut. I hate cutting mahogany veneered block board. Uh, I, I'm sure it's probably a property of the mahogany and maybe it's something to do with the block board, I just don't know. Now I've done a scribed line using this ice cream container as a, a guide. Now, incidentally, when you go to a show, 
and you see a guy demonstrating a jigsaw, I don't care whether it's a Festool jigsaw, Maffel, Makita or whoever's jigsaw, get the guy to draw a line on the piece of wood he's about to cut and get him to follow that line. Then you'll be able to judge just how well that jigsaw cuts. Now this is quite a tricky one uh, because I've got to go around in a circle uh, and I'll do my very best. The jigsaw is set up exactly as we had it before. I've got a pendulum on three. Uh, I've got the, the uh, chip guard in there. Everything else is the same. And I've got it on automatic. I'll start the dust extractor. cut done and there is absolutely no chips on that surface whatsoever and underneath it is perfect absolutely perfect and again for those people who need a bit of proof as to how well it cuts well again I hope you can see that it's perfect absolutely perfect now I may not have cut it quite to the scribe line as well as you would do. That's a skill thing, that's nothing to do with the jigsaw. But I, I found it very easy to follow that line, I could see it clearly, and uh, that is a perfect cut. This is a piece of 40 millimeter thick oak, and I don't know if you're able to see, I've put a scribe line there. Now this is the world's nastiest piece of wood. Just about here, uh, there's a knot, uh, and this is going to be as hard as a rock. Uh, and so if there's any deflection of the saw blade in this area, uh, then I think that one could forgive any jigsaw for finding it a bit tough there. So I'm going to now try and follow that scribed line, and uh, we'll see just how well uh, we get on. Now in my previous cuts, I was using the 75 millimeter blade. I've now installed the 105 millimeter blade because this wood is a bit thicker. But all my other settings are the same. I've got pendulum on three. I've got the uh, uh, speed control set on automatic. And I'll now turn on the extractor and see how we get on. surprised me how easy it was. There's my cut, perfectly clean, a uh, little bit of pick up there, and there, there's the wavy edge cut in this piece of very, very nasty piece of oak with that filthy knot there. Absolutely dreadful thing. And it's done a really good job. And it's nice and square, as you can perhaps see. And I don't know if that's in the camera or not, but uh, that, that's perfectly good cut. Yeah, I like that. Excellent. Well, you've seen me do all these cuts, including this treacherous one in this uh, mahogany faced block board, and that is as clean as a whistle. Uh, the 
Cut in this oak-faced MDF, absolutely perfect. And if you were in Mrs. Miggins' house uh, and you only had one go to scribe that cut to that wall and she's standing over you, she would be proud of your efforts if you use this jigsaw. And you saw me cut this 40 millimeter thick piece of solid oak, complete with the nasty knot down here, and there was absolutely no problem at all. What I was unable to film, I didn't even think about doing it at the time, I'm in the process of building in a desk in my study for my computer, and I had to scribe the back of the desktop uh, to the wall. It's 20 millimeters thick oak, and here's the offcut, and I'm showing you this because it is such a beautifully delicate piece of wood. Uh, and there's no breakout whatsoever, it's nice and even, and that was a lovely, lovely job. In the first video, you saw me cutting for my kitchen worktop, again, clean as a whistle, so nothing to worry about whatsoever. Now, if you're not sure whether you want one of these, go and see a demo. Go to your dealer and ask to try one. Uh, and if, even then, if you're not sure, even if you buy it, you can return it within the first 30 days. Now, I think this is a lovely jigsaw. I must confess that uh, through most of my woodworking career, I've avoided jigsaws uh, because they never seem to do what I wanted them to do. But this one does, and you've seen me demonstrate that to you today. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been helpful. Thank you. Bye-bye. I have to just do a very quick aside here. Uh, in a number of my videos, people have seen the uh, CMS unit uh, behind me, which has got the uh, TS55R saw in it. And I use it for rebating work, and I did some earlier today, and my rebate wasn't quite big enough. So I made it slightly bigger. And to show you just how accurately that saw cuts, this is the little tiny piece that got cut out for my rebate. It's perfectly square and it's wafer thin and it is a little piece of wood angle and I think that is absolutely amazing. Done on the CMS unit. Brilliant.